Hello, for today's video lecture we're going to be talking about the moment of a force about a point using vector calculations. So as an alternate to using the force times distance to calculate the magnitude of a moment and then using the right hand rule to find the direction, what we would usually call the scalar method, we can instead use an alter alternate vector method uh, to find the magnitude and direction of the moment vector uh, in one calculation. So this alternate method may seem overly complicated for simple moment calculations, particularly simple moment calculations in 2D, uh, but it's going to be much easier to use when we have complex 3D moment calculations where the perpendicular distances that we would need to find uh, are difficult to find, uh, and also the axis of rotation may not be super obvious uh, and maybe a little bit more complicated. All right, so what do we want to do if we want to calculate the moment using this vector operation. Well, the moment is simply going to be equal to r cross f. So if we have uh, our system, so here we've got our lever again, um, and I've got point A, so I'm taking the moment about point A. Uh, what I'd want to do is f is going to be my force vector, so I just need to list that out uh, in terms of x, y, and z components. Uh, and r is going to be a vector from the point we're taking the moment about. So in this case, we're starting at point A, uh, and it can go to anywhere on the line of action of the force. Uh, so R is always gonna start at this point. It could go up to point B, it can go straight out over here. Uh, so long as it makes it to the line of action of the force, uh, R has many possible options here. All right, so we need R cross F, that's gonna give us our moment vector. So what is this? cross product uh, in all of this. Uh, the cross product is a mathematical operation we can perform with any two three-dimensional vectors. So we need two vectors, we take the cross product of them, uh, they both need to have kind of three elements uh, in that vector. So the result is going to be a third vector uh, perpendicular to the first two, which is also going to have three elements. So if R is an X, Y, and Z components, force is an X, Y, and Z components, my moment vector is going to pop out of this r cross f in x, y, and z components. All right, so it's important to note here that the cross product is not commutative, so it does not work like multiplication, uh, meaning the order does matter uh, for these input vectors. So you need to do r cross f, not f cross r. Those are going to be different values that uh, the cross product puts out. All right, so calculating the cross product. The first step in determining the cross product is to determine all three components of both the r and the f vector. So we need to know what the vectors are going into this. Uh, so even for 2D vectors, we need to list x, y, and z components. Uh, if it is a 2D vector, your z component is simply going to be 0. So both r and f are going to need those x, y, and z components. Uh, so from there, we can either calculate the cross product by hand, uh, or we can use a computer tool such as MATLAB uh, or Wolfram Alpha to calculate the cross product for us. Both of those tools are going to have a simple way to co calculate cross products. So I don't go over in detail how to do the cross product here. Uh, you can see appendix section 1.4 for more on calculating the cross product by hand or with either of those tools. Uh, but generally it's going to be the use of computer tools that makes the cross product calculation easier than scalar calculations. Calculating the cross product by hand is a bit cumbersome. Uh, we're doing the cross product to save ourselves some time, so we might as well use a computer tool uh, that can do this pretty quickly for us. All right, so the R cross F calculation will spit out a three component moment vector, uh, and we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the overall magnitude. So if I've got X, Y, and Z components, if I do X, X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared, that gives me the overall magnitude. And I can use the right hand rule to visualize the moment. Uh, so again, uh, kind of looking back at this, I had my 2D problem that I've kind of morphed into 3D here. Um, and so the what's gonna what the R cross F is gonna spit out is this moment vector here. So that is gonna act along the axis of rotation. And if we take our right hand, stick our thumb in the direction of the moment vector, and then kind of curl your fingers, that is the direction the moment would be. Uh, kind of spinning the object or accelerating the object. Um, so we can use the right hand rule to kind of visualize the rotation that would wind up uh, from this particular force about this particular point. 
Alright, so that's all we have for today's video lecture. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again.